Hey there, how's it going? My name is Jake, and today I'm going to be getting back to basics. I'm going to talk about tiles and tile sets and how they apply to level design. But wait, you might ask, what the heck are tiles? Well, to explain that, if you take this image of a Mega Man level and draw a grid over it, you might notice an emerging pattern. Some of these grid sections look similar, even identical. No, definitely identical. One of these grid sections can be called a tile, uh, sometimes it's called a cell. Level designers for older games would commonly use sets of tiles to draw what showed up on the screen for the sake of performance. Tiles are usually square, but that's not a requirement these days. Tile dimensions have also historically been a power of two, like 16 by 16 or 32 by 32. But again, this isn't a requirement anymore. I'll talk a little more about the history of these limitations in a moment, but I want to get a little more detailed into what a tile contains first. A single tile is just a bit of space on the screen, sort of like a pixel, but obviously much bigger. A tile contains visual information, an image or a bitmap. However, a tile usually also contains data for the game engine to use. The included data determines whether you can interact with the tile and in what ways you can interact with it. The image on a tile is usually pulled from a tile set. A tile set, by the way, is a single image containing multiple tiles, sort of like a gallery of the images contained within a game. You can use data and image in conjunction as well. For example, imagine a tile where the grass is blowing in the breeze. What's happening here is that the data in the tile specifies that the grass should be animated, and which animagenta. <sighs> All right, let's try again. The data in the tile says that the grass should be animated and also which images in the tile set should be used in the animation. The game engine recognizes that information and cycles through the appropriate number of image tiles to make the animation happen. The animation is just the game engine cycling through X number of different images in the tile set. There's nothing special about the image in the tile, it's just being refreshed constantly with a different image each time. As another example, let's look at a door. The tile image can be open, closed, or, if you're real fancy, locked. The tile data will track whether the door is open or closed. It also tracks which image to use and when. With a locked door, it'll also track whether it's been unlocked and which key will unlock it if that's necessary. Okay, so that's basically how tiles work. But why do they exist in the first place? Tiles and tile sets exist due to hardware limitations. For a more thorough explanation, you should definitely check out this video, but suffice it to say that the NES, the Super Nintendo, and their ilk were far less powerful than modern computers. Programmers had to be clever when designing graphics for such limited hardware, and so they worked in tiles, or more appropriately, in cells. Since the Nintendo was so popular, using tiles became a common aesthetic. Even today, despite most gaming machines having more than enough memory to handle millions of colors, game studios still use tile sets for a variety of reasons. For example, tile sets make it much easier to keep an aesthetic consistent between areas. If you're using the same tile set in multiple towns, for example, they'll look similar even though the setup is different. So, a tile in a game has two qualities, how it looks and how it behaves. Either quality can change for any reason, but those two things can always be defined on a tile-by-tile -tile basis. Let's take a look at Stardew Valley for some examples of how this can work. On the path between the player home and the town, there are fences. Now let's take a look at this tile using those two criteria. The image is a fence, which is a barrier in real life. So the information in this tile reflects something similar. You can't pass through that tile. On the player's farm, there are trees. The image looks like a tree, and there are things you can do that will change the data contained in the tile. For example, if you chop it down, that tile would become clear and passable. If the data for this tile says that the tree contains some kind of item, shaking it will produce those items, but then the data in the tree tile will change such that the tree no longer contains any items. You'll also notice that it takes up several tiles. If you pass behind the tree, some of the tiles become partial tri partial trans if you pass behind the tree, some of the tiles become partially transparent so you can still see your character. That said, it's likely the tree is what's called a sprite and has different 
properties than map tiles, but I'll talk about that in another video. I want to talk about the farming tile because this is likely the most complex tile in the game. Tiles on your farm can be in one of five basic states. Occupied, cleared, tilled, containing a seed and or fertilizer, and containing a mature plant. If a tile is occupied by a rock or an old plant, it can't be used for farming. You clear it using a tool, the pick, the axe, or whatever. Once the tile is cleared, you still need to till it with the hoe. That means you could clear a tile for aesthetic or preparatory reasons, but leave it as settled earth. Once you till it, you have to plant a seed there, or else the earth will eventually settle, and you'll have to till it again to use it for farming. By the way, you can add fertilizer to the soil, which will change both image and the data of that tile. Once you've planted a seed, you must water it daily. Watering, again, will change the image and the data contained in the tile. The image of the plant in that tile will change daily, and once it's mature, you can harvest it. But even at this point, things aren't so simple, because some plants will remain after they're harvested. It's because of this complexity that the farming mechanic in Stardew Valley is, in my opinion, the most interesting part of the game. Using size can be very powerful, and since the designer is working with tiles instead of pixels, it can be easier to make a larger level because they don't have to edit an entire say image to adjust how the level looks on screen. They can just change individual tiles. A smaller area, like a house, can feel cozy. A larger area can feel spacious. Using narrow, dark, long corridors, like the caves, can demand the player's curiosity and or feel claustrophobic or spooky. However, using long, narrow, non-forking paths in an open area, like the path behind the player's house, can feel more contemplative and calming. Your farm can feel claustrophobic simply because of the overgrowth. <laughs> because of the plot's size and the ability to chip away at the barriers, the, the plot begins feeling more interesting and open over time. There are a lot of elements of good design, color, value, shape, direction, that can be implemented and explored using a set of tiles instead of a hand-painted background. In other words, even though you risk areas looking similar, you can still make powerful and interesting game areas using and reusing tile sets if you pay attention to how you use them. There are downsides to using tiles in a game, like tiling, meaning the landscape looks unbelievably repetitive. That sounds maybe obvious, but it's harder to get away with this now that graphics have gotten so good. Stardew Valley fixes this problem by making tile variants, but you could also avoid it by breaking up the scene with interesting set pieces or limiting areas where tile repetition can happen by, by using smaller play areas. Another problem is that scenes can start looking blocky, but this can be combated by including negative space in your tile images. You also run the risk of things looking a little samey if you don't have enough tiles or tile sets to pull from. Of course, and I'm sure I'll mention this more in the future, all of these issues can be turned into positives just by leaning into them. As with many design problems, if you work them into your design, then they can add depth. The upsides to working with tiles and tile sets, on the other hand, are numerous. Level design can be more fluid since you can change larger areas of the layout more easily. Assuming you can avoid the sameness across various areas, using a particular tile set in multiple areas can make the design more cohesive and communicative. For example, if the item store sign looks the same in all of your towns, then players will be able to find it more easily. There is also, of course, the argument for performance. In 2D game design, using tiles and tile sets is pretty common. That's for good reason, there are plenty of upsides. Also, people have been develop developing. <laughs> Internet, yeah. People have been developing games this way for quite some time, so it can be easier to get started. There are aesthetic downsides, but the potential upsides to working tile by tile can outweigh that. It depends on what your art direction is, of course, but using tiles can be very beneficial. And while I'm on the subject, programming a game with tiles tends to be easier as well. You can make a set of rules for one particular tile and then use that code in that tile all over the place just by placing that tile multiple times and possibly changing the image if you need to. Making everything individually and or uniquely for each scene probably be more interesting, but it's also probably going to be significantly more time consuming. You may or may not be in love with the blocky aesthetic of a tile based game. However, its ease of access and commonality makes it a pretty attractive design technique. It can also prove to be a low friction starting technique for making your first game, assuming your first game is 2D. A 
tile-based video game can be a simple way to build your project. To boot, it can be an easy way to harness some degree of nostalgia for those systems like the Nintendo Entertainment System, or the Commodore, or the Atari, which is sweet. What am I gonna do? You are just all about interrupting me today. Yeah. <laughs>